Sorry, Mike is eating a uh, ham sandwich that he got from Mr. Tobacco. Oh, God, dude. He looks like a homeless person right now. Welcome to Two Dollar Steak, a pro wrestling podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Aaron Varnum. Joining me today, as always, Big Mike. Yep. Cookie. Smoke weed every day. Okay. <laughs> and Tolbert. Oh, live and in house, in person. Tolbert, you're here. I, ha- I am. You are here. Uh, where you been? Oh, well, I was on vacation last week. Vacation. Vacation. All I ever wanted. Had to get away. Uh, went to Charleston with the wife on our baby moon. Yeah, I and I, and I hear, um, since this is a, a podcast about professional wrestling and bodily functions, uh, you spent a lot of your vacation in a bathroom. Tell me. The, the, second, the second half of it. I think it was karma because I, I took my beautiful pregnant wife to Charleston and there's all these uh, wonderful raw bars and oyster bars and cocktail bars, which she can have none of. Yeah, she's pregnant, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she would oblige me and uh, let me go and have uh, an appetizer of oysters and get a cocktail before we went to dinner to the place that she picked out. I let her pick out all the places we'd eat, uh, which is a, it's a good plan if you got a pregnant woman with you because they, they're spot on with the food. Uh, but... Um, the oysters after like probably my third dozen in the first Jesus day, Christ. man. Uh, Christ, man. That's I agree was. with me. And halfway through the trip, I woke up at four in the morning, uh, just stomach sloshing. I was like, something doesn't feel Ooh. right. I go to the bathroom and I am in there for the rest of the morning. It's a very, second day of our vacation. It's a very Homer Simpson dilemma. It yeah, sounds yeah, like yeah, something yeah. Homer Simpson would do. Well, <laughs> so... The first oyster bar we went to, uh, the bartender called me out. Friend, he, 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 he was joking. You know, he's like, yeah, so you bring your pregnant wife to uh, a place that's full of raw oysters and booze. Yes. Good to go. But all yes. I could think of is uh, the Simpsons episode where Homer gets sued for, you know, sues the seafood restaurant for all yeah. you can eat he's, fish. He's no man. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's what, an eating what, machine. What did you do after the second seafood restaurant? <laughs> we went fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we haven't, we didn't get to see you last no. week. Um, but I, I, I rallied. I, uh, I bought a $15 bottle of Pepto-Bismol from the corner bodega. Sorry. So there's this bodega on the corner. I swear to God, every time I walked in, he would jack up the prices. <laughs> <laughs> like the first night I went in, it was right by our Airbnb. Got a couple of waters for the night stock up. You know, it was nice and cheap. I swear to God, every time I went in there, like the prices went up $10. Well, he <laughs> saw your, your, your very uh, <laughs> emergency waddle that you were doing. Yeah, he could tell. I most definitely he, was. He, he, well, he saw it over and he was like, Mark. <laughs> yeah. But little Pepto, a little nap. I rallied and I was I was eating shrimp and crustaceans that, that very night. <laughs> That's so gross. I think I went and had some pickled shrimp after that. Oh, Tolbert, that is uh, that's that's gross. You, so you did not get to come last week, but did you hear Panda uh, eat the chip and Mike eat the chip? Or well, you- I heard all about the uh, the spicy chip challenge. Uh, right. I would have been here. I tried to get off for uh, for all out, but um, glass animals were in town. Yeah, was, your fave, uh, right? Oh, they're a pretty good band, but uh, so it was all hands on deck for a sold out show. So I couldn't make it, but made lots of money and hung out while mike was puking his guts out yeah it was a uh it was a sight to be seen yeah, yeah it was not intention like i didn't want it to happen it was i'm almost 30 minutes into this thing i've, I've suffered enough and my body eventually <laughs> is just like hey now this is coming out and so i puked in there yeah. in his front yard yeah so- i was uh checking the group chat like because i know y'all are watching and doing dumb things so i, I got a little group chat play by play and uh mike bent over the the front porch banister was pretty entertaining. Yeah, I'll tell you, uh, my Labor Day last last uh, week was me hosing <laughs> off vomit from my beautiful, beautiful front yard. Well, the worst part was I didn't. My plan was I'm not going to eat anything because I don't want to throw up. And oh but I, I feel like not having anything in my stomach was the bad idea. was the bad idea because yeah. then it. it uh, but yeah, I mean, it came out just as red as it went down. Yeah, it, it, I, I will tell you. 
Jasmine and I were sitting out with Terry. We, we like to sit out on the front porch with Terry and just let him absorb nature and everything. And she looks at me and she says, I smell vomit. <laughs> and I'm like, I smell it too. It's a little spicy vomit. <laughs> and we're like, it has to have been from where Mike threw up. And we look and it was a pile, a pile was in my yard that I had to wash off. So that was that was my labor day. Uh, it, it was laborious. <laughs> oh, second time you've had to uh, who's vomit. vomit off of somebody <laughs> in, within the last two years. That's right. Uh, Cookie. Yes, sir. You got to go to a pro rugby uh, event. Yes. How was that? <laughs> World Cup qualifier. It was USA versus Canada. Went to it last night. Uh, you know, Canada is the Mexico of the North. <laughs> according yeah, to Scott Steiner. According to Scott Steiner. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> and uh, I will say it was a good match. The USA won. They beat that ass. It was 38 to 9 in the end. Um, and it was just really cool to see some uh, professional rugby for the first time. Uh, especially on that tips? level. Did you get any uh, any any idea of how you're going to be playing your game now that you are in a much higher division of rugby? I did. I got some inspiration, definitely, uh, definitely from the South African nine. Uh, his name is Ruben De Haas. Wait, 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 wait. Are you going to be playing nine this season? <laughs> no, no. But I will be. It's, so here, the props actually get to handle the ball. Like we can actually, we get space with the ball. Uh, but I will not see the field for probably a little while. And I'll tell you <laughs> why. It's because the front line, all of them look like Mike, except they're Polynesian or Samoan. So uh, I probably won't get any playing time because everyone's 6'4 yeah, and probably 260, 280. You keep that bench warm, Cookie. I will. Yeah, <laughs> I, I will. Until something happens, your boy is probably going to get like <laughs> five to ten minutes worth of playing time. You used to be clubbing some knees. <laughs> trying Cookie, to get some coach. Time. coach, I'm ready. <laughs> Coach, Coach, Cookie, that's going to be like my entire first season of playing rugby where I'm just like, uh, I guess I'll just stand here. He's and- going to be uh, Aaron. You remember playing like being on JV, like a sophomore or something. Yeah. And, and, and like, you get pulled up for the <laughs> for the last 20 seconds. <laughs> that's me. That's me. Last 20 seconds of a like, you've game. already cracked a beer. You're like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll go out. <laughs> yeah. Anything else this week, Cookie? How is how is Colorado treating you? Uh, so this week I went to orientation school is about to start boys, uh, literally starts Monday. So Jesus Christ, why is it so late? I don't know because we're in quarters, not semesters. Oh, not... okay. Yeah. Quarters. Yeah. We're doing quarters. That's know, insane. Right? Yeah. It's pretty weird, but yeah, it's about to start. Shit's about to get real boys. I'm, I'm very proud of you. Cookie cookie. We don't say this enough. We are proud of you. We are proud of your journey. Thank you. And hurry up and come back. We need you. Uh, it looks like we've only got 15 players <laughs> for our rugby team uh, coming up against Triad. So well, I, I sipped and paid dues. So oh, you um, said I might, I might show up. And- Great, 16. we got there 16 we go. now. Cheer you guys on. <laughs> I will say that that Left Shark Davenport did come out to practice on Thursday, yeah. and uh, I might not have to play 80 minutes as a prop. <laughs> so. We'll see. Uh, anyways, Mike, the most boring man in the world today. Sometimes you have boring weeks. I mean, Sometimes you have boring weeks. I, uh, you're, you're not going to give us a pregnancy announcement. That's already happened. Yeah. It's not your wife's birthday. That's already happened. Correct. The only exciting thing you did this week was lose to Panda and then also buy a bodega choker ham sandwich, which you just devoured, which I crushed, by the way, that thing was awesome. I, I, I said, I appreciate Jasmine, you know, living here. Um, because there is nice things in the, the fridge. Remember back when he used to have three jars of mayonnaise? It would be like two yes. jars of mayonnaise, a slice of cheese, mm-hmm. in like a, and a bacon, half drink bottle of water. And the bacon like that. that was like five months old. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. so, there was never any more than like four items in there. I, I knew that Aaron would have mayonnaise here. but I, It's there, Japanese mayonnaise. There was mustard. There was pickles. It was perfect. It was a great little sandwich after the workout. I Did had. you put some of the Grillo pickles on, pickles on? I don't the know. Grillos are where it's at. I think I did. Yeah, I no, it's the fancy pickles that we have up in the thing. We even have pickled onions that you could have put I on it. I saw that. I did not. I, I saw those as I was putting the other ones back. I was like, very you know, I'm ready, tasty. I'm ready to eat this. You really churched it up, man. I did. That's what we do. So on Friday nights after football <laughs> games, I'm tired. It's 11 o'clock at night. I'm just getting inside the house. 
And Jasmine makes me what she calls a Buddha bowl, which is just throw a bunch of stuff you have in the fridge together, like fresh things. So it's like a base of arugula, a base of, of spinach. Some She'll fry up some uh, chopped up uh, sweet potatoes. She'll put some feta cheese on top. So healthy. It, it is very healthy. Uh, <laughs> we had some leftover steak from Thursday night. She sliced that up real nice. Put some stuff all together, a little bit of sauce on the top. That was my dinner Friday. And then I had a blowout on Saturday. It was so healthy, so good. And it got me going. Anything else this week? Uh, no, I mean, other than watching Ohio State lose because they don't have a defense. And- yeah, so, Mike, we were watching this game. I, I turned it on after you were saying this. I didn't realize that that game was going on. I thought that that game would have been a primetime game last night. Uh, it, it was it was primetime in the sense that it was like Fox big noon kickoff. game. It, it's, yeah, and, and I get that now. So I'm watching this game, and uh, it did not look great for Ohio State. Oregon looked very good. Uh, what, what, what is your assessment of the Ohio state state state? I'm turning into Scott Steiner with my Detroit <laughs> accent. Ohio state's what just their team, their they're, team this year. The off- offense looks stacked. The new, the, you know, redshirt freshman quarterback. He's got you, an arm. You, you can see where he's going to be great. He's got, he's a little having a little bit of trouble reading some of the defenses and that sort of stuff, but that's where they got, but he's they young. confused. They couldn't get off the ball in either line offense or defense. They couldn't establish a run and they, they were literally bent over showing their ass the entire time playing defense. I was watching that game. Uh, the offense, what I assess from the offense, he's got an arm. He's a very strong armed quarterback, sometimes a little too strong. I saw him overthrow a few times uh, in, a, in a few of the series. They looked like they were going to come back and get it. Fourth quarter, I'm watching this game. It looked great. Like, like Ohio State had the momentum on their side. Uh, the Ohio State band was playing. Everything was going. And then all uh, for nothing. It, it was a, a tough lo- loss Correct. for Ohio State. Correct. And then I uh, then I got drunk and argued with people on Twitter. Yeah. So because of that, <laughs> Mike uh, got very angry <laughs> online. And that anger showed through as he talked shit to people on Twitter about 9-11 truth thing <laughs> and oh uh, how Mike... Mike got into it with some girl that was trying to sell her nudes online. I, I look at this girl and I'm like, oh, it's it's one of those girls. Yeah, I tried to keep it, you know, above board and, and really just kind of attack her terrible um, kind of thought process and, and logic behind anything. Um, and uh, then it got personal. And eventually, you know, what? <laughs> after about an hour, eventually you just got to say, fuck it. You're dumb as shit. Um, bye. <laughs> I, I, so I was in the movie uh, Shang-Chi last night. Jasmine and I had a delightful date night, Saturday nights. Uh, Jasmine has switched up her schedule. She now gets off at 530 on, on most days, which is nice. Usually it was seven o'clock and we were struggling to kind of figure out things to do on Saturday night. There was no UFC fight night last night. So we went to Il Forno, had a delightful Italian dinner. After that, we went to go see a movie at the point. We went to go see Shang Shang Chi. It's it it looks like Shang Chi, but that's how the, the correct pronunciation is. So we went to go see that last night. And uh, after the movie, I look at my phone, and Jasmine says, "Jesus Christ, babe, you're very popular." And I see like hundreds of <laughs> notifications <laughs> on Twitter <laughs> of Twitter. And uh, I did not know where to start because also there's like hundreds of WhatsApp notifications because Mike is just. Yeah, I looked at my phone as well, and I think I have 200 and something WhatsApp notifications yeah, it's on Saturday night. Absolutely <laughs> insane. And I'm like, this is this is, like, what is where do going I start? On, <laughs> where do I start reading these things? So like before the you know, it's a Marvel movie, so it's got like a an after credit scene. So I'm like waiting for this after credit scene to start. And I'm like where do I start with these notifications and Jasmine and I, so first off we see the video of the cat (laughs) hanging down from the stadium. Did you see that cookie? No, I didn't see that. At the Miami game last night, some, uh, some feral cat got loose (laughs) and started hanging like cliffhanger. And they saved it with American flag. (laughs) Somebody caught this cat. The cat fell down probably 25 feet, 25 feet onto an American flag. They caught it and then held it up like lion King. (laughs) After they and the cat's like, what am I doing? Like, this life is terrible. So after that, uh, I start going into the other Twitter things and it's Mike going in it with this 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 lady. So there you go. That that was my Saturday night. I will tell you, 
when we went to Il Forno and Jasmine wanted me to tell this story because it was one of the most absurd things that I've ever seen in my life. Uh, we're at the theater. This child is ahead of us. He is, he's like all decked out. He, he's wearing, he looks, he looks great for the night. Got a fresh t-shirt on, nice hat, some good uh, Air Jordans on. He's at there and the, he, he's going to see the same movie we're going to. And he's being questioned by the guy. He's like, nah, man, I'm 13. I'm 13 years old. This guy's obviously probably like 11 or 12. It's fine. He's going to see a PG-13 movie. Mm. We're walking in. He's this group of people are walking out with a tub of popcorn. The large popcorn has free refills. We're in a pandemic. So, we, you know, it's a little different. The kid says, hey, let me get that tub. <laughs> and the guy looks at the tub and looks at him and says, OK, here it is. <laughs> this kid worked somebody into getting free popcorn and not just a little bit of popcorn, a big ass amount of popcorn for all of Shang-Chi. And I saw him. We heard him because <laughs> at some point, 13 year olds are the loudest walkers in a movie theater ever. He's stomping around. He kept going back to get refills. That kid ate so much popcorn last night, and we were so proud. Jasmine looked at me and was just completely shocked <laughs> at what we saw. We had to sit down on the bench out front for like 10 minutes and just kind of observe and like pull it all in. We didn't know what the fuck was going on. It's rough in the streets, man. You got to you got to hustle. You got to get that popcorn. You got to get that popcorn. You got to respect it. I respect I that 100 yeah. percent respected it. Jasmine was Jasmine. And I looked at each other. and We're like, that's Cookie Jr. right there. <laughs> Love it. Cookie, would you have done that as a, as a child? If I was around the, the right amount of people, yeah, I probably would have. Like if what? I was around certain people. Yeah. OK. OK. Just making sure. Just yeah. making sure. So today it is a pro wrestling podcast. As always, we're talking about a very special individual. Um, this week I asked so Travis, <laughs> I said, Travis, give us a wrestler. You know, we, we have some problems sometimes of thinking of wrestlers who we have not focused on in the show. Uh, Travis gave us Scott Steiner, <laughs> <laughs> which and is one of his all time favorites. I, I, we believe that it is probably in his top three. And we started to put pieces together. Travis, a reserved person. Travis is a man that's very calculated and very yeah, artistic, calculated man, precise, yeah. precise. And then you see Scott Steiner, which is the exact opposite. And then we start to realize that's who Travis secretly wants to be <laughs> in his life. <laughs> Scott Steiner, a man uh, late 1998, 1999, started turning into this big bad booty daddy this, yeah. this character that is not the same as early scott steiner not at all uh boys what, what are your initial thoughts on so scott steiner we just watched a 20 minute youtube video of a compilation of him going off script and uncensored and it was hilarious but all i can think about is like he's one of those really wasted guys in the bar that's rambling about complete bullshit it's and you want to cut him off, but you're scared to because you know he's gonna fight you. But you're also <laughs> you're a little bit entertained. By yeah, yeah, you're like, you're like, I want to see where this goes. I do want to see where this goes. <laughs> but you cut him off. I'm not cutting him off. <laughs> he frightens me, but I'm also very amused I'm by intrigued. him. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Yeah. I feel that uh the Detroit accent is a very underrated accent. Yeah. It is just a trashy accent that I appreciate more when you hear Scott Steiner start saying trash and like, it just, it, it's that way that he, he does his A's, his vowel sounds. The Detroit accent is very underrated. Mike, what do you feel about Detroit? Uh, fuck Detroit. Fuck Michigan. <clears throat> That's it. Mike, are you, you're, you're giving well, I don't me wanna, another, I don't want to get, I've never been. Have you been to Detroit? I've never been to Detroit. Driven by it. You've driven by Detroit. Yeah. What to go and where the Canada? Uh, just, I, it's like right <laughs> outside Mexico Jordan, North? <laughs> according to Scott. I mean, it, it's it's a trash city. I mean, that's what it is. It's just kind of dead. I, so I, what one guy like bought pretty much all of Detroit. now like, Detroit, Detroit. Uh, 
So it's just kind of nobody wants to live there. So I started watching the, the show Detroiters. It's amazing. Uh, with Tim Robinson from I Think You Should Leave, the guy that, yeah, that, okay. that we appreciate. He is from Detroit. <laughs> that show is very it's like a love letter to Detroit yeah, and kind yeah, of the yeah. cultural things that are there. It seems like an area that like I would have fun in. Like it just seems like a cool area now. And and in I believe that the way that they portray Detroit is a very working class, blue collar city. Still, the industry's kind of fallen apart. I feel that it still has a little bit of character to it. And and you see the characters that come from Detroit. Tim Robinson, who is a, a comedic genius. And then you've got Scott Steiner. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to respect it. If the city wasn't in Michigan, maybe I would have a little better thing to say about it. But for the most part, it's just just. Gutter trash. Yeah. Gutter trash. Uh, uh, Cookie, your wow. thoughts on Detroit and Scott Steiner. <laughs> uh, first, I'm going to say Detroit. Here's my hot take on Detroit. Within 10 years, I think it's going to be a booming city. It's there be- you go. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll start buying some uh, hey, some real estate. Dirt cheap, man. Dirt yeah, cheap. That's true. That's true. Second, Scott Steiner. Is it me or does Scott Steiner's voice not match his mullet? Like <laughs> <laughs> the, the chainmail mullet and the uh, the the pre nineteen ninety nine mullet are are very interesting. It's sure. a higher pitch noise yeah. that, that comes out of his his mouth. It's interesting. I do appreciate like as it age as he aged and you know smoked more cigarettes, he started getting a little raspy and just in all the screaming he does because he doesn't speak in the normal volume. No, he doesn't. Uh, and and correct me if I'm wrong, Travis. He was in jail for a little bit. So like Steiner was this character, you know, he, he a very traditional. He wrestled in college, a very traditional all-American professional wrestler up until about 1998. He got arrested <laughs> for something. I'm not sure what it was. Went to jail and then came back as spent 10 days in jail for aggravated assault. Yeah. After the, that, that time he became he changed. He became. <laughs> The Scott Steiner that we know today. <laughs> Big, bad booty daddy. Big, bad booty daddy. It was actually uh, aggravated assault and making terror threats. And 69ing uh, in public. 60, <laughs> there's nothing finer than a 69er with Scott Steiner. Oh, uh, my God. Uh, that was it. That was only 10 days in jail. Oh, well, he's been arrested multiple times for different things. <laughs> can I hear? Can I hear a list? Uh, well, it, it didn't, doesn't go through the list. It just says he's been arrested on multiple occasions. Um, yeah, 1999 is when he pled guilty. Spent 10 days in jail, $25,000 fine, 200 hours of community service. So they took him off TV for a little bit. He comes back as the big bad booty daddy. There Chain mail and everything. And that is one time where like, I swear to God, when I was a child, right, I loved watching the Steiner brothers. Uh, oh, yeah, the me and my brother, we, yeah, yeah, we yeah. did the whole, we reenacted the whole thing, man. It was oh, a oh, oh, oh. yeah, it's a great character yeah, and, and like great. a good They're wholesome, brothers. Yeah, wholesome. Yeah. And I remember uh, around that time, I transitioned to WWF and strictly WWF. I didn't watch a lot of Nitro. And I remember turning back and seeing this guy and not knowing who he was. He's a completely different thing. And I didn't realize that it was Scott Steiner. Yeah. Until somebody said it, and I did not believe that it was Scott Steiner for the longest time. I definitely remember his return as well. I watched a lot of Nitro. I was a WCW guy. I watched Nitro over WWF most Monday nights. But I remember his turn uh, return. And you, like you said, you're such a big fan when you're a kid. You're like, who the f- who the hell is this? And you're like Scott Steiner. Jesus Christ! Yeah, and, you very, know he's very contrasting. Yeah, he's he's twice as big. He's got the chain mail. He's just you got see those arms. Rough look, yeah, those freakish arms, dude. The tattoos yeah, are he's got different. The, he's got the girls, you know. He's got everything, um, which is part of why I watch Nitro every week. Was a Nitro girl, yeah, but <laughs> trashy women. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mike, I will tell you, late in Scott Steiner's career, and I'm going to get this from Cookie and Mike. Do you guys know what drop foot is? And can you explain what drop foot is? It's nerve damage. Um, so, I mean, it can happen from a stroke or injury to your back or any way, any injury down the leg. Um, but essentially you have a muscle that pulls your foot up. Right. And so that doesn't really do a ton of function, like without being weight bearing. So when you walk, it actually helps and prevents your foot from slapping the ground when your heel hits. Okay. Um, so it, it's, you need it for like foot clearance when you walk. Right. So, so when you get drop foot, how does that affect your athletic performance? I mean, most of the time, yeah, if it's bad, you got to wear a brace. It's what, um, 
Jalen, the guy, the linebacker from who plays for the Cowboys now, who when he was at Notre Dame, he got hurt against Ohio State. That's what it was. Um, and so he he has drop foot, so he wears a, a brace. So is it permanent after you sometimes, get? It? Sometimes it can be. Sometimes it, it comes back. Depends okay. on where the damage is or, and how bad it is. Thank you for that cookie. Have you ever heard of drop foot? And and what is your take on drop foot? Uh, much like Mike said, uh, I have heard of, I have heard of drop foot. Like, no, I mean, like, I agree. I, is, is that what you do in I, class? I, 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 I concur. I can, that sounds good. What he said. I can, I, I can attest from my, uh, PT days that drop foot does exist. Mike is correct. in everything that he just said. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Cookie's gonna, I only have a doctorate degree. You've been, you've been validated in, by your peers. In this, in, with the, a specialization in this area. Cookie's going to come out with loose change, too. Oh God. But it's about loose joints in your foot. <laughs> All about drop foot. Loose change, too. A sequel. Yeah, I mean, it, I, honestly, like, think about, like, when your leg falls asleep. and like you. you so it's like, it feels like that? No, my, without the numbness, like, you can still feel it, but, like, you can't control your foot, like, when you walk, or, like, your knee kicks backwards or something like that. It's kind of similar. So does Scott Steiner have drop foot? Is so, that how we got so here? So he got, he got drop foot uh, <laughs> later in his career, and that's why kind of, like, you see his work rate kind of turn into <laughs> something that's not, he's not doing this. Just a lot of Steiner recliners. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of recliners. The recliner. No, as opposed uh, no, to hur- the- Hurricane Ron. <laughs> Hurricane Ron! <laughs> That's Frankenstein. That's a goddamn Frankenstein. <laughs> Don't you ever stop doing that move. They stole it from me. Mexico fuck, South. Fuck Libre. <laughs> <Get it itself. laughs> All right, let's talk about some wrestling. Mike, for our first matchup of the evening, we're at the transition period. You have got one Scott Steiner against one Booker T. Correct. This is from a Monday Night Nitro 1996. No date. It is right before. Oh, crap. What pay-per-view was it? It wasn't. Fall Brawl. All right. Um, And so currently, you know, Booker T is still in Harlem Heat. Scott Steiner is still part of the Steiner Brothers. This is a one-on-one match. Uh, Booker T comes out. I mean, we've, we've talked about Harlem Heat Booker T is just just kiss, right? He's got yeah, the, I he's mean got they're the, they're both incredible. He's got the he got the look. He comes out, you know. Obviously, he's hamming it up as the heel. He's got a little pyro action. Um, shout out '90s dads tucking t-shirts into blue jeans. <laughs> Did you see the guy with the trick? Oh shirt my god! I, I, I saw the trick shirt. I'm not normally one to like wear, wear weird shirts, but like I was like, I'd rock. What do you a, mean a trick shirt? Tricks. The cereal. The cereal. It's like he's got the big giant like rabbit and it says tricks on it and it's tucked into his blue jeans right at the beginning. Yeah. Oh, and he's like going wild. I, I literally saw that and I said Aaron would wear that shirt. Yeah, he would. I would not wear that. I, I, I was not a tricks guy. I was a sugar smacks guy. Ooh. Either way, um, shout out them. Yeah, then we get Scott Steiner coming out who's just freaking thick. Yeah, th- and, this is but this is the transition yeah, period yeah, so before. So he, you and you can definitely tell because he, he doesn't have the headgear on. Yeah, he's rocking just a flowy mullet. Um, and you, uh, you kind of get the vibe. You're like, okay, we're just big old men slapping meat, man. This like, is right before he started shooting steroids into he his, probably uh, already was. Uh, uh, it looks like he probably uh, was. It looks like this, he probably was. This is, uh, so they get, they get to the ring and literally they start just pushing each other. And like, you just hear the thickness. Uh, I don't know. How <laughs> like, yeah. Like, 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 but like, you know what I'm talking Like if yeah. you slapped a steak, like yeah. that's what it sounds like. Um, and, uh, and then we're off to the races, right? It's, I like this this kind of style of wrestling. Um, it's a little more ground. You get a couple little flashes of like shoot wrestling from Scott, and you're like, oh shit, yeah, this guy was. <laughs> well, good. And, and like, I was very surprised. Both of them yeah. shoot wrestle very well yeah. throughout this match. Yeah, and it and- is. It's less of a big meaty men bumping meat match. It's it's less about strikes. Power trading, moves and more blows. about it, it's like, right, more I about some wrestling. Yeah, like, there's yeah. actual wrestling in this match. And uh, but yeah, like he he hits like a a drop down and takes Booker's back in like a flash. Like I was like, oh god, like you know, like especially a lot of the new stuff is like very telegraphs and like that. You just you saw pure athleticism out of Scott um, Booker T actually goes up to the ropes a couple times. I think he hit a little uh, what's a. I don't even know the name of any of these moves. Uh-huh. Yeah, yep. so he hits one of those things where he <laughs> jumps off and bodies the dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, a cross body. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was talking about. Um, and then uh, he also gets Scott with a little scissor 
scissor kick, little action. Yeah. Booker, Booker T, man. What was, uh, big, what was that? The reverse game. windmill kick to the face? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Well, no, he, he actually missed that one, but he did a little scissor. Like, Scott's bent over, and Booker just like, pow, pow. It's the bookend, right? The is bookend it? is the rock bottom. Oh, that's right. That's right. What is the, What does he call that one, then? The Harlem side kick? No, no, no. It's it's the it's the kick that he the scissor kick that he does. It literally I mean, is a scissor kick. Scissor, I think it is yeah, called a scissor kick. Called it. Yeah, yeah, called yeah. And by the way, who was on commentary with Tony? That was Larry Zabisco, God. the living legend. <laughs> he is a he's a poor man's Jesse Ventura. He's or... a poor man's uh, everything. Larry Zabisco is <laughs> like yes, he is. Uh, uh, Larry Zabisco is a worker. You know, he, he he's a, an incredible 1970s and 1980s oh, professional it's... wrestler, early 90s. Uh, Larry Zabisco, I liked him as a child, like listening to his commentary. I thought he was this cool daddy. Oh, so my dull. guy. It's t- you could you could hear just Tony like walking him through the whole thing. I was like, <laughs> come on, guys. Like we're watching a pretty good match here. Um, long story short, um, book goes for another top rope move. It actually goes for like a frog splash. Scott rolls out of the way. Scott hits him with a belly to belly suplex one two three scott steiner wins and we get a little glimpse of scott steiner to come because he pulls his arms up in the air and goes fuck yeah baby <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's starting to make that transition this is where the roots are laid <laughs> okay um but yeah i mean he i i initially i think we talked i wasn't sure why travis was so infatuated with scott steiner but watching that 20 minute little promo video clip and then <laughs> just i mean he's an amazing wrestler yeah um and he invented the hurricane run so he invented that what the is goddamn frankensteiner <laughs> frankensteiner mike it's a frankensteiner oh, damn. you're talking to me it's a frankensteiner <laughs> like looking back at his stuff he's got some incredible moves too like he he is he invented a bunch of stuff and we'll talk about what finishes cookies match is one of my favorite moves in all of professional wrestling i think it's the I, it, it's hard to describe uh, without when, when we get to cookies match, we'll actually talk about it, but it is a fun uh, move to talk about. Um, can I just give Tolbert a shout out to, on his Instagram post the other day? Did you see it? <laughs> the, the sting and Rick Flair. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's how I felt. When I, I, got off <laughs> I saw Tolbert. I saw that and I had a big fucking smile on my face because you don't post much on Instagram anymore. And I've been busy this week. Did but, uh, you, you made that meme, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it says me finishing my last bar <laughs> shift of Labor Day weekend, and it's bloody Ric Flair with the championship. And then Stink. It's just the perfect, like, like Sting the, with his hand on his shoulder. Yeah, like, just, like, comforting Rick. And, and then it says the underneath Sting, the beers and the weed I'm about to consume. <laughs> and I did. Oh, <laughs> it was a- fucking crushed it there. And shout out to Byron's friend, Stefan, for... The sign and shout out of the podcast at All Out. Um, apparently, he enjoyed himself. It was his birthday. Bought himself some tickets to All Out. Hard cam side, couple rows back. And not only do we we get the shout out, which was great. We, yeah, and- we got some likes. We got some follows. We got some listens. One of the biggest pay per views of the year, probably the biggest pay per view of AEW's career yes. so far, and and honestly, one of the best pay per views in a while. Two hundred thousand people ordered this pay-per-view and then the countless number of people like cookie that illegally took somebody's <laughs> credentials and so, watched it. So we're, we're talking 200,000 buys, at least 400,000 views on the $2 steak podcast sign. And not only that, but he gets it when fucking Minoru Suzuki. I saw goes it face to face with John out. Moxley. Uh, we were fucking screaming to the heavens when when Suzuki came out. We saw the saw the sign. I'm like, oh crap, we have to get a picture. Quickly <laughs> snuck a picture of it. Ah, uh, my buddy straight. Justin tech. I was at work, you know, and I see a text on my phone. It's my buddy Justin, and he goes, "Holy shit, did I just see a two dollar steak sign on all out?" <laughs> 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 yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and then after we get all these followers mike gets into a, a, a discussion about a conspiracy theory yeah uh it's it's not a, whatever i know i know <laughs> hey, twitter twitter 176 followers not we, twitter instagram 176 yeah, we followers we we twitter, some, yeah. twitter 356 now yeah so we're slowly creeping again we're sm- we're, we're, we're we're back on the uh things are moving in the right direction this is jeff hardy when he comes back that second time 
He's going against, he's going to have that great match against CM Punk. He's going to get the championship again, and he's going to do good things. Yeah. Thank you, I Mike. I just want to see Suzuki and Mox beat the shit out of each other. Somewhere. Yeah, unfortunately, Wednesdays got cut a little short. Somebody ran long, and then Suzuki got busted open. Hard way. Speaking of what everywhere. Can I tell the story real quick of my hard way busted open? <laughs> sure. Last night, uh, everybody, it is a notorious uh, story here on this podcast about how hard and heavy and well made my father's furniture is. Sturdy. Yesterday Sturdy. morning, wake up <laughs> pre coffee. This is the first thing I do. I'm like, Terry, I'm going to feed you. I reach down to grab Terry's dish. Boom. I'm on my ass sitting in the floor. Jasmine's like, babe, did you trip over Terry? Is Terry okay? And I'm like, babe, babe. She's like, is he okay? Is Terry okay? And I'm like, I'm, I'm not okay. (laughs) I hit my head against the corner of one of my dad's shelves that he built. And I look at Jasmine. She's like, babe, you're bleeding all over the place. My God, he's busted wide open. I was busted (laughs) open sitting in the floor. And Terry's just like trying to taste my blood. And like, you know, he's just being a a savage cat. I almost knocked myself out yesterday. Just like Minoru Suzuki taking a death ride. Yes, Cookie. Aaron, how does it feel doing the favors for your dad's show? That I I put my dad's shelf over big time. (laughs) Big time. Did you get a photo of it? Uh, no, I mean, it like it, it's so tiny now, but it bled. Well, you got to like, get a photo of the blood down your face. I should have. Yeah, I didn't even think about it. We didn't do that for you at the, the rugby tournament. Did I've we? got a picture of that. Why don't you post that? I'll post, I'll fi- I got to find it. It's, that was that was bloody. a while ago. Yeah. It's like two years I have, ago. I have a, yeah, but I do. I was going through my phone, cleaning it out. and I found a picture of Mike bleeding. <laughs> uh, so the Minoru Suzuki, John Moxley match. Uh, if it would have gone five more minutes, I feel that it would have been a classic. Yeah. And they, I mean, the, Everybody was pissed that they didn't have the time, but they'd had the time, but then they had to go because Suzuki's freaking bleeding everywhere. And then Moxley, like it, it, it just seemed like his entrance. I mean, it's his homecoming, all yeah. this stuff. The entrance was a touch long. And then the match got kind of shortened for that. That's why it's kind of nice to have a five minute overrun sometimes. He's in coming back. Wrestling. He's coming back. He, he's got a boy, Lance. They're going to they're gonna do something. I can see it. Um, when, when we got to watch that match, Jasmine was sitting here and she's like, she she made a really great point. She's like, I love his strikes. His strikes look really good. And as somebody, Jasmine watches professional wrestling with us. She's not like mm. a fanatic, you know. She's she's a UFC fanatic, and she looks at me and says something that was very poetic. She says, "Wonder how many people are watching this guy for the first time and falling in love with him." And I'm like, that's actually like a really cool thing. Like, wonder how many people this is their first exposure. To Minoru Suzuki and they're like this guy is an insane man he's bleeding everywhere I wish that they would have given that showcase five more minutes so he could have done more of his craziness to get more people to understand the allure of Minoru Suzuki okay oh my god <laughs> Mike. 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 I feel that this is like a great like expression of everything and Mike just says Okay. It was it was <laughs> very well, Aaron. Aaron, it was beautiful. Very well said, Aaron. Yeah, it was, it was re- very nice. Fuck <laughs> y'all. Very... I'm done. <laughs> Podcast ends at 19, 119 I'm just, point. I'm just trying eight. to get a Liverpool game on. Well, I can put it on, on yeah, the Peacock. Why didn't you tell me? Put, put the Liverpool game on. Anything else on the social medias this week? Uh, you want to go ahead and give me a, a, a hits and shits? I know that you can put one. Just pull a, a Scott Steiner promo out of your ass real quick. <laughs> um, I mean, pretty much anybody can. <laughs> I don't know if I got it in me, man. Yeah, no, you do. I, 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 no, I'm not going to do it. Why? I don't know. Just because I, I don't think I could do it justice. I think you can, Mike. No. Mike, you can. What, you what kind of Scott man. Steiner promo do you want me to give? I, I want you to give. I think a couple more hoagies. And he's, he's got <laughs> one in him. <laughs> I want you to give a uh, a Scott Steiner math rebuttal on why the Twin Towers was not an inside <laughs> shot. <laughs> well, you see, those terrorists come up from Mexico North and they want to take our towers no, no, down. Mexico East. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Middle East, the Mexico East. <laughs> okay. and they, they've got a 55% chance <laughs> of getting through security. Well, you see, if you take the Y axis. <laughs> You 
had the Steiner brothers against he who shall not be named and Jushin Thunder Liger. <laughs> he who shall not be named, a.k.a. the Pegasus Kid, and Jushin Thunder Liger against the Big Bad Booty Daddy, or actually I should say, uh, this is Big Bad Booty Daddy Light. Uh, right. Steiner, and the Dog Face Gremlin, Mr. Rick Steiner. Uh, but Aaron, I don't really have an opening monologue for my match this week. So uh, Why is that? I just don't. I didn't really have anything to say because I didn't want to really talk about he who shall not be named. Um, You're allowed to talk about him. He, he existed. I and then I he killed his I family. Just... I mean, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't have to put the guy over, but you can say it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so here's the deal. Here's the deal. After that dark side of the ring, it, it humanized the story a little bit yeah. more. It's a tragic story. I hate always having to, like, bring this up. I appreciate him as a wrestler. I can separate him as a wrestler true, true. and separate that from him as a human being. Him as a human being is pretty terrible. He was not, not pretty terrible. It's terrible. Yeah, he's not a great human being. Blah, blah, blah. Wrestler. He was incredible. I don't fan worship him like I did before the death of his family. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Anyways, true. go anyway. ahead, Cookie. Anyway. Uh, no opening monologue this week, boys. Uh, so, Mike, would you, do you have anything to share about Michigan? Fuck Michigan. We've already reviewed this. <laughs> yeah, well, I, stop I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't need to keep saying it. It's an established um, opinion on this podcast that Michigan is gutter trash. No, not an established, not on this podcast, a portion, a portion. of this podcast. I've never Thank been you. to Michigan. Therefore, I have no frame of reference. I'd like to form my own opinion. I would like to go to Michigan. <laughs> Let's go to Michigan. Area. Joe Para, his show is based in Michigan. I appreciate Joe Para. I think that Michigan could be a nice place to live. Weed's legal in Michigan, Mike. Okay, yeah. yeah. I want you to go to Michigan in January and tell me how. <laughs> what about like rolling on the Great Lakes? It would be a beautiful place. Like it's it's a nice Bob Ross painting of snow and and water and trees. Yeah, Lake Erie's trash too. So okay, we're just gonna keep trying to sell Michigan to Mike, and eventually, hopefully, it'll it'll happen. Don't buy property in Detroit. You know, you know, <laughs> Ohio uh, actually beat Michigan in a war over Toledo. You know that, right? No. Yeah. I know that. But is that why Toledo is, is very much considered Michigan? Michigan? Yeah. Pretty much. Huh. It's like Western Cincinnati is Kentucky. What, what kind of war was it? Was it like between two uh, like militias? I believe so. Yeah. It was like the, the National Guard or the state guards. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's because there's a port in Toledo. Oh. And the Erie Canal and all that shit. All right. All right. Anyways, back to the match at hand. $2 stake of history podcast. That's right. That's right. <laughs> what, what is that podcast that everybody listens to? It's like an eight hour history yeah. show and the guy just talks about it uh, like different things. And he goes on like real deep dives yeah. and he's got like but a monotone what makes voice. Toledo so holy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now that fuck Michigan is established, <laughs> let's start the countdown. Cookies, top four, number one. All right, number one. Uh, Chris Benoit almost gets paralyzed five minutes into the match. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> this is what started it at all. <laughs> Too bad they didn't pull that off. This, um, Harley Race didn't warn him about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, Rick Steiner, the dog face wonder, and uh, Benoit are doing some hand. They're doing some hand checking. And then Rick takes his back, and you can tell Chris wasn't ready for this because Rick picks him up for that high angle, like German suplex, and just drops him on his mullet. <laughs> like, like the left arm went lit, the ref had to bring him back to life. It was not a good sight five minutes into the match. Number two, <laughs> we watched the man get a stinger. Number two, Ricky, Ricky. <laughs> Did you hear Your brothers, Steiner bro? Yelling, Ricky's, yelling Rick, Snyder, Rick Steiner's name. They love each other. I, I would do that uh, if Adrian and I had a tag team. You would do that? Okay, what so I mean, I automatically, I automatically thought about boys. would be like of mice that. and men. I'd be the big dumb one. <laughs> and my brother would be the, the angry one stores. that like tells me what to do, and then he'd the kill rabbits. me at the end. So you're Rick Steiner, and he's Scott Steiner. Or is it the other way around? <laughs> Who's no, the no, one? Scott Steiner's the dumb one. <laughs> Rick the dumb Steiner's one? the one that's got a... Uh, he, he, what, what is it? He's got a... He, He's got a degree in something, but he's also like works for the the some Georgia school board. 
Are you going to find that out for us, Mike? He's a real estate broker. He's a real estate broker. Real Look estate at that. Broker. And then Scott Steiner is a part owner at a Shoney's. And like, <laughs> I'm not oh, even kidding. Listen, really? I, will say, I will say Rick Steiner, only semi-retired professional wrestler, it says. Yeah, he'll come back every once in a while. Scott, Scott's not retired. No, he yeah, did, we, we did meet him at WrestleCade. Well, we have a photo with with Big Bad Booty Daddy. Who, who was was Michigan playing Ohio State that day? And I we were like, they, they were. So, yeah. He's yeah, like, yeah. I'm just looking at. <laughs> I'm looking at the byline. <laughs> yeah, because uh, it, it was a WrestleCade weekend, so That's right. Thanksgiving weekend. That's right. Well, fuck Michigan. Well, anyway, anyway, so uh, Scott and Rick hit a clothesline German suplex combo, basically. Which again, Benoit lands on his damn neck. So if you're keeping track at home, that's Steiner's two, Benoit's neck zero. <laughs> Once again, the ref had to bring him back to life. Not a good look for the Pegasus kid right now. Number three. Number three, Jushin Thunder Liger does this superplex from the top rope. And you know, usually people don't take a wide stance because, you know, the ropes can be unstable or whatnot. But Liger, like, damn near does a split on the top rope and manages somehow to get Steiner up and over for the superplex. Literally, there was no room for error. If he slipped, both of them would be in the ER. Or they'd self-medicate with some Somas and some alcohol in the back. <laughs> so- I, I imagine Somas were big in the early 90s. Were, were they, they, they were. They were. Much they were. like... Uh- I, I feel that this is probably the tail end of your favorite uh, recreational drug that you always reference on the podcast, Quaaludes. Yes, Quaaludes. Yes. <laughs> Very dated <laughs> drug <laughs> reference. I, I wanted to say Quaaludes, but I was like, ah, uh, I think they're out of style at this point. So it's let's on just, the way out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, let's go to our, my honorable mentions. Cookies, uh, honorable mentions. So Liger and Benoit trying to build momentum by hitting like those double crossbodies. And they each get caught in the air and get power slammed. It was actually pretty sweet because the timing was just immaculate from the Steiner brothers. And I mean, like, Aaron, would you say the Steiner brothers were your favorite tag team as a kid or were one of your favorites? They were one of my favorites. I I was a big uh, Harlem Heat fan, uh, which is, you know, respect. I loved Harlem Heat. I loved the, the Steiner brothers. Yeah. I really appreciated WCW's tag team division. It, they had some good ones, you know? It really does remind me of AEW like tag team wrestling a little bit, a little bit. It's it's top notch for sure. Um, Benoit Liger with the dual Hurricanes on the Steiners. I'm pretty sure Rick's boot catches Scott in the dick on the way down. <laughs> made me made me giggle a little bit. Uh, but um, one more thing, Liger is so important to the new age wrestling man. You can see the fast pace, like high spot tempo, that can be attributed to only his gimmick. You know, so mad respect for Jushin Thunder Liger. Um, let's see here. There was a couple other crazy moves that I saw, like the elevated angle slam from the second top rope. Um, Rick Steiner doing that, uh, shoulder charge, basically ramming, uh, Benoit into the turnbuckle. Benoit, for the most part in this entire match, he was like the jobber. Yeah. Like he, he did not do as much as Liger did in this match. No, he got his ass beat for the most part. Um, which yeah, it is what it is, I guess. Number four. All right, real quick. Number four, Benoit and Liger almost win with a double head butt on Steiner. Liger picking up Steiner for the Tiger bo- or Liger bomb and almost spike him on his beefy neck. <laughs> Scott Steiner dropping Liger directly on his skull with Aaron's favorite finishing maneuver, the Steiner screwdriver. It's such a d- I, I I don't know how to describe it. It is like a package brain buster like. Yes, the Sit brain out. buster with a twist. And, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a move that he did not really do a lot towards the end of his career. <laughs> no one would probably let him. No, 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 no I would. It's, it's, it's a cool <laughs> and it's a cool move. And then you hear the Japanese commentator do screwdriver. <laughs> yes, yes, Steiner screwdriver. And then like, so I swear, just it's like a a suplex brain buster with a tombstone mixed together. And it's one of the gnarliest things I've ever seen in my life. Um, but anyway, so those three things that I just named, what do all of those things have in common, boys? What's the common theme here? I don't they're, know, Cookie. What, what is it? They're beautiful to see. The Liger okay. bomb, the Steiner screwdriver, double head butts, all that stuff. But CTE is definitely going to be guaranteed. Mm. And with that, this match is brought to you by CTE and Michigan Wrestling. There you go. Great match. Great match. Um, 
I thought you were going to say they mostly start off in a 69 position. <laughs> That's your no, move. <laughs> but I wish I did. Uh, this match was, but this match was damn near a squash match. I mean, it was Steiner's mostly just, you know, putting themselves over for the most part. You know, they looked indestructible. So I'm going to give it three and a half cookies. It wasn't bad, but it, you know, it was entertaining. Yeah. It was entertaining. There you go. You got to see, but it, it, it's not quite the levels of uh, the Steiner brothers against uh, Kinsuke Sake, Sasuke and uh, Hiroshi Hase that you, you watched that one time, but it is yeah. still a good uh, matchup between uh, four able-bodied competitors. Absolutely. All right, for our final matchup <laughs> of the evening, we have gone full Big Bad Booty Daddy. <laughs> We've got Scott Steiner against one Kevin Nash. Oh, man. In a uh, straight jacket match that yeah. I really didn't understand. Yeah, you what don't the- understand because uh, Tony Schiavone doesn't mention anything about the rules <laughs> until about like six minutes in. You're like, oh, this is what's going on. Right. All right, so we start off. Uh, this is Monday Night Nitro. This is uh, sometime in the 2000s, early 2000s. Uh, so this is after, uh, you know, Steiner has injected steroids into his biceps. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this is towards the end of WCW. This is, you know, when it's all kind of wrapping up. So he's got a little age on him. He's been beaten up. You know, he spent years in the ring. But he comes out with his classic chainmail headdress uh who's on his side one of the nitro girls uh I, I miranda fr- or, it was like a weird miranda name or something like know. that yeah. anyway she's got her, her scantily clad you know his uh his escorts as he as he likes um he likes them pretty he's not afraid to tell I, some ladies they're ugly what what was our obsession with just trashy what, do you think it was, it the was Jenna the, jameson i like, think so this man. was like the the peak of her this like was like power. Carmen Electra and Playboy and all that. Just the women Emily were Anderson. like not natural at all. Just very trashy looking women that 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 everybody was like, she's hot. And I'm like, <laughs> but, it, you know, I see I see you know, that Nicole. style yeah. of, of lady out and they are always with someone that looks like Scott Steiner. <laughs> so, you know, I see this all the time. You know, they'll have big, hey, big tits. Give and, me an A. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you look over and it's some dude that looks a lot like Scott Steiner. So I think they just go hand in hand. There's they, not a lot of it. evolution no. in, in those <laughs> no. those gene pools. You, you see some gene pools. They like they, they become different people. That yeah. gene pools just remain stagnant. Yes. So he starts out with one of his classic promos, which he just kind of babbles. You can't understand oh. half of what he's saying. And he always <laughs> takes it just a little too long. It's like he should have stopped, but he keeps going. Well, part and of it is he has to get to where he's going. He, <laughs> yeah, I think, it, it's there. You turns. I think. And, and this is one of the things that. Yeah. Like, so he's got an idea of where he's going. Yeah. He does not know how to get there is, <laughs> is the thing. But he's going to get there eventually. Where Sid, oh, 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 like we've had Sid promos where Sid sort of the same, but more of a country and not as funny. Sid is unintentionally crazy. Yeah. Steiner <laughs> babbles. It kind of makes sense. You, you, you can tell he's been thinking about it in the locker room. There, there's a he's logic on the way train. out. Yeah. yeah. He's been thinking about it, but. He just gets so worked up and so excited. It just comes out all wrong. And then he just kind of ends it with there's nothing finer than a 69er with Scott Steiner. That's right. Uh, he says it, there's a couple things that are bleeped out in this link. Um, he said something else that they, they completely just have to bleep out. It, it, he was calling himself Holmes. So I think it was a reference to that porn star. Uh, with the large Johnson. Yes, he, he makes a lot of references uh, about how large his Johnson is in <laughs> 69. But with his muscle mass and steroid use, I just don't think the 69 position is the optimal sexual position <laughs> for Scott Steiner. <laughs> but, you know, that's a, that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, like, <laughs> let's let's do some Steiner math here and think what, what, what would be the angle of entry that would be most uh, effective for Scott Steiner? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think you would just have to be on bottom. I'm not sure. We you don't the Y exit like, and yeah. yeah, divide it by 69%, and then yeah, you total it by 3.14. 
and, and that's a uh, hundred it's an over a hundred percent chance oh, no. that you're getting pleasured by the big bad booty daddy all right so he drops his promo uh he drops the 69 bomb um out comes his opponent kevin nash uh there's no referee to be seen in the ring i'm wondering what the fuck is going on uh kevin nash is holding a straight jacket uh so halfway through this match we find out that this is a straight jacket match and the only way to win this match is to put your opponent in the straight jacket and that's how you win uh and after you put your opponent in the straight jacket you can beat him as long as you want to and once you say you're done you've won this is the basis of the match <laughs> yeah, that's what I, guess. <laughs> I don't know well, well at this point old nash comes to the ring with his uh his deep bag of moves which is a big boot kick <laughs> and a jackknife power bomb <laughs> and that's Oh, yeah. That's it. In, in the, the elbow drop where he kisses his bicep. Well, that's that's Scott. I'm talking about oh. an old Nashy boy at this point in his career. Um, yeah, he does two moves. The whole the, the whole Irish whip, big boot, jackknife power bomb. Um, anyway, we started off. These guys just start kind of punching each other. They're they're older at this point. You know, they're just entertaining the the dying crowd of WCW. Um, <laughs> We get a little interference from his uh, from his protege, and she delivers the weakest chair shot I have ever seen. Yeah, that, that was, <laughs> Wait, that was we, weaker than Hogan's. Oh, it was yes. dreadful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. dreadful. Yeah, um, you know, Nash sells it as you know, brushes it off and delivers uh, a jackknife power bomb <laughs> to to this lady, his protege, and leaves her laid out. Um, this distracts uh, Nash a little bit. And, you know, not much really happens in this match. A little back and forth, you know, they fucking, you know, big boot each other, hit each other a little bit. He calls for his brother. His brother, uh, his brother Rick comes to the ring, distracts Nash a little bit. Um, they get him in a Steiner recliner. Yes. After, uh, after Rick delivers a chair shot from the distraction from Scott, uh, Steiner recliner, and his brother helps put Nash into the straight jacket as he's got him in the sign recliner, but they get him in there. There's a lot of buckles, a lot of snaps, a lot of uh, belts on the straight jacket, and they can't quite figure it out. It takes them a little while, but they get him all wrapped up and Scott takes the win. Um, I don't know what this was about, what this led up to. It was I don't pretty, either. It was pretty dumb. I don't know. It was very dumb. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely that's... a high spot match. So thank you, Travis, for uh, your hard work picking this out. I'm sure there were a lot of options. Uh, here yes, for, uh, Mr. Steiner. Uh, Aaron, uh, do you guys smell that? It smells like Vince Russo, doesn't it? Like it just has <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All Vince over. Russo was the person <laughs> yeah. running yes. WCW at that time. Yeah, you have, yeah. To, you have to appreciate how much shit stay. He uh, Heat Steiner got though. I'm watching it now, and it's like so, people were throwing trash at him. So there were one point people <laughs> people standing up, giving him the finger, throwing yeah. trash. Right? They start throwing trash, and at one point he stops the match, and he's on the apron cursing at someone in the crowd looking like he's about to jump the barricade uh they just keep throwing cans um yeah he hated those cans <laughs> <laughs> he hated those cans but you know we watched this 20 minute promo video there, there was a lot of times he almost went into the crowd yeah after somebody the- I, I guess one could call it Ro- roid rage uh i will tell sure. you Co- Co- <laughs> cocaine's a hell of a drug so i have a little cousin named mitchell he, he is a big wrestling fan or was a big wrestling fan. And uh, he lives in Charlotte with his, his family, who was my cousin as well, obviously. And um, I wanted to give him a special like thing to go to with his family because he loves wrestling. And I called him up one day. I was doing the NWA Wrestling Fan Fest. It is a big deal in Charlotte. They used to have it at the Hilton. And all the old school wrestlers would come together, but they would have a wrestling event that night at the uh in the in the convention center portion of it i I called up mitchell i called up his mom and it said hey can you guys meet us here i want you guys to come in i'm gonna put you on the guest list you're gonna have a fun time tonight he had the best time until scott steiner came out (laughs) and scott steiner threw a chair at my little cousin and my cousin was like that's it i'm never going to another wrestling event he's 10 years old at the time and he doesn't want to like show face that like he is terrified his friend beside him that he brought when it was talking up wrestling to starts crying and when I, like i've got this on video like i aired it on my wrestling show and he was I bet he got some terrified for that. yeah that same day he told somebody to put their bitch on a leash so oh god scott steiner <laughs> for you 
Yeah, unscripted always. <laughs> but yes, fun, fun little straight jacket match. Can, I guess. can we just say, like, is that how he orders his food too? <laughs> yeah, probably, <laughs> probably, probably. Cheese pizza. He kisses his bicep before each bite. Like, like can you just imagine like him being like one hundred percent that guy all the time? Does he have any children? Can you look that up for me, please? I would like to know if he's got any kids. I I don't see him as a supportive father. I don't see him as a support of anything. No. <laughs> when we did, did meet him, though, he was pretty reserved. He was very nice. Quiet. Too, yeah, but you paid him 50 bucks. So. It was 60. <laughs> but, but... <laughs> I was like, hey, it's over. <laughs> yes, Cookie. He has two children, Aaron. He does. He has two children. He are, has two are, are they estranged? Uh, uh, let's see. No, he's been married to the same woman since 2000. Wow. I know. That's not what I expected. Wow. He, good, good dad. Good dad, Scott Steiner. Yeah. 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 I remember when uh, Aaron approached him and was like, Mel, Mr. Steiner, and started talking. You know, I used to be like, yeah, yeah, 60 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> but yeah. What, what a guy. What a guy. I wonder what he's doing nowadays that the Shoonies is closed. Did that show he's closed? I think so. It said that they operated it from like, what is it from 2016 until August 2020? I used oh. to love some Shoney's, man. Those many family dinners at Shoney's. Shoney's, uh, their breakfast buffet was 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 top notch. It was those. That was the first place I ever had those powdered eggs. And you could get like a big old like clump or you would just scoop it. And it would just be like a fucking mound of <laughs> eggs. And I would just like drench it and like hot sauce and ketchup. I love that. You shit. think Scott Steiner used to go to his own Shoney's and like show up and request VIP treatment? <laughs> Give me the ham cube. Yeah, like the corner get, booth. Get bottle service. <laughs> the Shoney bear waits on him. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, send that mascot out here. I like him. <laughs> you remember Shoney bear used yes. to come out? Yeah. I used to have Shoney. I had a Shoney bear uh, toy. Yeah. It was like him in his red shirt that just says Shoney's on it. We used to have it, Dan. You know, we're uh, right near where uh, Pure Gold and Cheetahs is. That that place, Panama Bob's or yeah, Jack's or whatever. Oh, that, that's was where was? that was our show. Oh, wow. I, I ate many a meal at that place when I was growing up. Those sausage links were were delicious. Give me your haiku. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys say pause, Aaron. You, pause. You say pause. There Double you pause. Triple pause. What you got? All right. Were you ready? Nash brings his jackknives. Scott Steiner, 69ers. <laughs> Someone cut his mic. Oh, <laughs> keep that mic on forever is what I'm saying. Please, for the love of God, someone cut his mic. Oh, <laughs> I love him so much. Thank you for listening. Oh, so we are going to do. So here's here is the thing this week. Does Byron get to pick out the next round of matches? I, I want to do either this or that. And I want to get a general consensus very quickly. Mike suggested we do a word play when we have a a episode centered around one person the next week one of his opponents is going to be the person that we go on next week and i'm looking at it i don't want to do a he who not (laughs) should not i'm not going to do a chris benoit episode (laughs) sorry guys it would be very easy i'm not going to do a chris benoit episode we've already done a jushin liger episode so that would leave two opponents that we've we've had a lot of Booker T. We have not had a lot of Kevin Nash. <laughs> we have it on man. this show. Uh, I watched a lot of Kevin Nash growing up. That's I mean, <sighs> so Byron, row, baby, look back. Byron, you of all people get to pick our matches next week. We are gonna have a Kevin Nash. Episode. Oh, this terrible. is gonna be. Yes, this is gonna be boring. And at home, <laughs> you have to drink every time there's a big boot. Uh, in the big boot and jackknife. Everybody yeah. and jack jack knife. Knife. Everybody's gonna be shit faced by the end of this episode. Now, when I was a youngster, the jackknife power bomb was an illegal move. <laughs> 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 and Kevin Nash, uh, his reign of terror, <laughs> week after week. Diesel, <laughs> big daddy diesel. <laughs> All right, Byron, that is your assignment this week. You have got Kevin Nash to go forward with us. Uh, Thank you for listening to $2 Steak, a pro wrestling podcast.